energy and momentum along Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard is not simply a coincidence. It is the result of the community and the city making the revitalization of this corridor a priority. The Albina Community Plan of 1993 captured the community's vision for Northeast Portland, including Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. As a result, the city acted on this plan by extending the Oregon Convention Center Urban Renewal Area up Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard to Rosa Parks Way. This extension provided access to resources and programs. Over the years, PDC has financed numerous redevelopment projects at key nodes, financed $6 million of street improvements, assembled property large enough for redevelopment, and assisted hundreds of small businesses and property owners through the storefront, development opportunity services, and business loan programs. In November 2005, city staff, PDC, the mayor's office, and numerous community groups re-examined the scope and approach of redevelopment work along Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard to determine potential modifications to accelerate revitalization. The Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Action Plan was created out of these discussions and it serves as a roadmap for the work of city staff. As someone who grew up in this city, it's amazing to me to see the transformation that's taking place along that boulevard. It's very, very exciting. PDC and the city are committed to including the ideas of residents and business people in decisions about revitalization along Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. In the past, people living or working in the area have felt overlooked or not listened to. Urban renewal of the 1950s and 60s is still at the forefront of many people's minds and they are weary and mistrustful of participating with PDC today. The first strategy of the Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Action Plan focuses on getting PDC staff into the neighborhood at a variety of community meetings and events to make sure all voices are heard and that a variety of points of view are included in the decision-making process. When creating this action plan, Staff tried to set the example for the kind of participation they want to continue. The Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Advisory Committee is made up of representatives of Northeast neighbors and business owners along the boulevard. This group meets regularly and acts as a forum for discussion and to provide feedback to PDC on public projects in the area. I grew up in the area um, and I've watched the changes over the years that have been good and bad. Um, at this point, it, uh, my interest in, in, uh, is in seeing that with all the changes, all the progress that's occurring, that um, we do the best job that we can to keep people in the area informed and connected. With the development that's going on MLK, and if part of the goal is to have it a neighborhood street as well as a business street, the neighbors have, somehow have to become more involved and, uh, and feel welcome, I guess, that they can come and get information uh, and, and also participate in decision-making processes. My area of focus is primarily on, or in the Oregon Convention Center, and I work primarily on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard requires business density to make it a vital, thriving quarter. In the 1950s and 60s, it was a bustling commercial quarter that serviced the residents in nearby neighborhoods. Historically, the neighborhoods around Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard have been the most racially diverse and the businesses on the boulevard continue to reflect this diversity. Although rapid changes on the boulevard have placed increased economic pressures on longtime businesses. Supporting business development, especially minority-owned businesses, is a key focus of the Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Action Plan. PDC makes resources available to assist with tenant improvements and build-out for businesses that want to locate on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Those folks that have survived life on the boulevard uh, over the years, uh, the smaller businesses, the family businesses, those folks who may not own their building, they're, they're renting, they're renting because it's been affordable what's going to happen to them as, as the rents escalate. The action plan addresses the need to enhance the image and identity of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in a variety of ways. For example, the Gateway and Heritage Marker Project that we're currently working on um, and working with uh, local law enforcement, um, streetscape improvements, all of this enhances how visitors and residents feel when they drive or walk along the boulevard. These projects, along with uh, community pride and community activities such as the Solve Spiffin Up the Boulevard, are bringing people and businesses back to the corridor. 
This is the first year that it's ever happened. And it, we brought out 221 people for our first event. It was just great. Little kids and grown folks, and they were even pulling grass up and weeds. They picked up all the debris. It was just great to see. Commercial and mixed-use development is difficult to do anywhere. On Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, it's especially challenging due to the many small individual parcels, the parking and access constraints, the lack of existing structures appropriate for renovation, and the still emerging market there. Land costs and rents are rising quickly in the area, which has caused the displacement of some longtime residents and business owners. The Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Action Plan supports the development of commercial and mixed-use development by focusing on seven catalyst project sites at key intersections on Martin Luther King Boulevard. It also supports individual property owners developing land through technical assistance programs and through loans. The DOS program, a uh, great program, program simply uh, assists business people that with property where they'll do feasibility studies and there's a uh, a uh, portion that I pay and a portion that the city picks up, like a grant, I do believe, a uh, partial grant, and uh, works out very well. I mean, I couldn't afford it to do that whole program without the help of PDC and the DOS program, so uh, it's great. Yeah. The Vanport project opened on January 24th this year and is an example of the city's commitment to commercial revitalization and wealth creation in Northeast Portland. The history behind Vanport are very strong statements regarding the future of MLK Boulevard. You have people that are very interested interested in the development of the boulevard, and I think you have a circumstance that provides stimulus for further investment, and PDC, we're just thrilled to have played a role in that investment and in developing uh, this Vanport project, and we look forward to future projects on MLK. As part of the Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard Action Plan, PDC plans to create affordable ownership housing on two large sites in the near future, the Grant Warehouse site south of Piedmont and the Piedmont Place site on Rosa Parks Way. The Federal Environmental Protection Agency came in and said, yeah, we got a problem and, and initiated an emergency action at the Grant Warehouse site. Between the Environmental Protection Agency and Portland Development Commission, we ended up cleaning up the site. The site can be reused. It's entirely clean. It can be reused for anything. The agency has also commissioned a study to identify why the residential high-density zoning makes development so difficult and how the city can lend its assistance. Once a major highway, Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard has received several facelifts over its long history. From the removal of the streetcar line to the creation of a wide, tree-filled median down the middle of the boulevard, transportation has and will continue to play a major role in the success of the corridor. In recognition of the community's concern with the lack of on-street parking and no left-hand turn lanes, the city created a streetscape plan in 1997 to try to undo some of those impacts and help support revitalization. In the areas where we put in on-street parking, um, for the most part, we reduced the larger 10-foot uh, medians down to smaller medians. Uh, in most places, in one place, we took the medians out. Uh, that was to provide room for the on-street parking. Before, the street had four lanes that were 12 feet wide, and we narrowed the lanes down to 10 feet and were able to provide room for parking on both sides of the street. While a lot of progress has been made on Martin Luther King Boulevard in the last two years, there is still much to be done to make it a thriving corridor that provides jobs, housing, and services to Portland residents. The Martin Luther King Action Plan provides a framework for how the public and private sectors can work together to achieve common goals. It really distresses me because people always talk about it after the fact. And they say, oh, why didn't they do this? And, why? and I'm like, but where were you? We were calling you. <laughs> we were emailing. Where were you? So it's real, real important to be involved in the process. There are many opportunities to get involved and have an impact on the development taking place in the area. We encourage you to attend an upcoming meeting to help shape the future of this area.